When people enjoy a simple snack food, they don't usually think much about how it's made. But for the people that make that product, well, that's all they think about. As it turns out, making snack foods comes with some pretty big challenges. We're here at this food processing plant in Canada to see how the process works and how SKF solutions are helping plants like this one meet their goals. Let's take a look. Thank you for uh, having me today. I'm uh, excited to see what's going on in here. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you, Jeff. What is going on in here? Yeah, we're making sugar wafers. Sugar wafers? Yeah. This particular uh, piece of equipment we're looking at here is one of the ovens that manufactures the actual wafer itself. Okay. How long does it take to cook a sugar wafer? I've never cooked one before. Yeah, it's about, about two minutes, basically, to cook a wafer from batter to finished product, yeah. That must be a hot oven. It is. It's, these ovens get up around 350, 400 degrees. So, um, the parts inside of this oven, they sit in there all day long? Yeah. 24 hours a day? How, often, how long does the plant run? We, we run 24-7, so these ovens are running continuously 24-7. So the parts inside of this oven, they have to withstand that heat for that amount of time? Correct. Oh, that's hot. Wow. Yeah, that is hot. It'll cook you. In a summer day, it gets pretty warm. So the, obviously, that's the bearing right there. It almost looks yeah. like a train. Correct. Correct. And it just runs on the track. Yeah, it goes all the way uh, at the front of the oven. The batter's deposited, and the plates actually close. Tremendous amount of pressure between the plate. What it does is distributes the batter to each corner of the plate to make a full wafer. And as it travels by, we cook the bottom of the wafer first, and then it goes around and rotates, comes back this way, we cook the top of the wafer. OK, OK. You can see these are the bearings. Okay. These bearings don't require any grease. They're all graphite impregnated bearings, housings inside. On all our other ovens, we, we need to lubricate these three to four times a year. And there's approximately a thousand bearings in each one of our ovens. Thousand? A thousand bearings. Okay, so I've seen, I've seen the bearings inside of the ovens, but I, 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 don't, I still don't completely understand what the great advantage in the bearing is. Uh, I'd love to, love to have a better understanding of what it really means. Okay, well Jeff, let me show you the, uh, the previous product that was being used in this oven. As you can see here, you have the, uh, the roller, the carrier wheel, and inside you have two degroup ball bearings that are lubricated with Teflon powder. Over time, what happens with the heat of the oven, the Teflon powder hardens. So what the customer has to do is remove this circlip, take out the two degroup ball bearings, and scrape inside the housing. So, so every one of these uh, roller units has to come off of the off of the roller in the in the oven, and you take it back in the lab, or, or and you have to service each one of these back there, taking them apart, cleaning them, putting Teflon back in them. That sounds like a lot of work. It's a lot of work, Jeff, and that's a very good point. Is when they do this, the machine now is shut down, and thereby they can't do their production runs. Okay. So once they've taken those bearings out, they'll clean inside the housing of the roller uh, here, and then they'll, they'll look at the bearing. If the bearing is still good, they'll have to clean out that bearing, put in more Teflon, and put the bearing back in. Okay. If the bearing is seized and no longer uh, be able to run, they'll put in brand new bearings again. Thereby, what happens is your component cost is, is high. You have, the, you have the component cost of replacement, you have the labor cost, and then you also have the uh, Teflon powder cost as well. And not to mention the downtime cost. And, and the downtime. I'm looking at a really shiny, nice looking piece down here. Something tells me that this may be the new solution. So tell me about this. Yes. This is the SKF wafer oven unit. It's an integral unit that is the roller. It has uh, the rolling element inside in one unit. It also uses the SKF graphite cage. If this acts as the lubricant, it eliminates the need for the customer to re-lubricate. I'm sorry, this acts as lubricant? Yes, it does. How does that happen? Inside the bearing, you'll have the rolling element. In this case, it's balls. Okay. These balls will wear against this graphite. This graphite is passive compliant. Which, which is what? It really addresses people and food safety uh, requirements. Okay, so the balls are in here, and, and the graphite's lubricating the balls, and ultimately the advantage in that is that it lasts longer, that it, the what? Yes, it does, Jeff. You have, you, it, it runs up to 50,000 uh, service hours oh, wow. of relubrication-free operation. 
Well, it seems to me that this technology is really amazing, and it's, it, it helps with efficiency, it helps with the, uh, the safety of the food. There's, there's a lot of things going on that, as a consumer, I just don't think about. You know, I buy my sugar wafers and they're cooked. And uh, it's amazing the thought that goes into making something like a, a, an oven much more efficient. Sounds like a win for everybody. It is. So Dean, I've seen a, uh, I've seen the bearings inside of the, the oven unit. I've learned a lot about how it works. What's your role here? Well, basically, I work for Motion Industries, and we supply the plant with all kinds of MRO products. And you know, we talked about uh, new technologies and ways of you know reducing uh, downtime, increasing uptime. And uh, when they came to me with this new graphite bearing, I thought, you know, I'm going to introduce it to uh, Lance Canada, or Lance Industries. And uh, so basically I brought a team of SCAF people in to meet the Lance Maintenance and Engineering. We sat down, talked about some of the successes that they've had with this product in other areas. And uh, here we are today with, uh, you know, the bearings running in the oven at three, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything is working like you thought it would? Everything's working great, yeah. So far it's been fantastic. I know they're excited, we're excited. And, uh, you know, we're just looking for more opportunities to help them with some of their issues and some of their uh, maintenance problems. Well, it seems like there's a lot of things that SKF is involved with. I mean, more than just this, you know, just this oven unit. It seems like there are a lot of things SKF is helping with. Do you have some other examples? Or? Well, we work real close with them. I mean, perfect examples, they look after lubrication, lubrication systems. Uh, obviously, you're trying to seal products, a lot of flow with their icings and that, so they make a lot of specialty seals. It's another program they're going to put in place where they can look at critical equipment, do vibration analysis, and schedule their downtime instead of catastrophic or, you know, downtime where you're losing product because, you know, you've had issues within the plants and that. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of great things with their company. Well, I think at this point, what you and I need to do is to uh, do a little sample here. That's a great idea. I'm going to... I'm going to take a sheet. I'll let you grab one. And we'll I don't want to get in trouble. Maybe nobody's <laughs> watching, right? Okay. They say if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. That's good advice for oven bearings, too. As we've seen, SKF wafer oven units are helping food processing plants be more productive and profitable, all while helping to reduce their environmental impact. I'm Jeff Burton, thanks for watching, and for your interest in SKF Beyond Zero, and for making choices in your life that will help preserve our environment for future generations.